Hi, boys and girls. So since you guys seem to really like the uh, Brutally Honest videos, this is another one for you. Uh, I've had a lot of requests uh, for uh, PS Audio, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so first of all, uh, you may know that we carry PS Audio. So one of the things I want to underline, we, we primarily only review products that we ourselves uh, carry and own. This way we can be as biased or unbiased, depending on your point of view. The way I look at it is that if I own it, then I can say whatever I want about it. Uh, I don't care if the manufacturer likes it or dislikes it. If you if you watch my last um, video, or the last two because this one will fall after the magna pen um, we talked about the sonus fiber and i talked very openly about some of the uh, one particular issue with the tweeter um, so i don't care now to be fair they have not reached out to me nobody has although that may happen <laughs> but um i honestly don't care i've paid for it it's my right to say um, what i like about it and what i don't like about it on balance i will say I'm extremely careful about bringing in a line of products in the store. I do a lot of research. I listen to the product very carefully. I do background uh, search into the product. And then finally, if it goes, if it passes through my uh, very, very uh, comprehensive list of criteria, then I'll consider doing the brand. So with PS Audio, um, falls into the same category. We did our research, we really liked it, that's why we brought it in. I've owned PS Audio ever since I was a teenager, um, and I've always had tremendous respect for their value proposition. They've always stri uh, uh, striven, striven, stri strived <laughs> to make products that uh, were considerably better than the asking price. And that's one thing that Paul McGowan has always um, tried to do. Uh, and I think for the most part, he succeeded. Um, so talking about the good, well, uh, I'm gonna start first of all with Paul McGowan. He is a brilliant ambassador for the company. Uh, I love his videos. He, he takes questions from viewers. He'll And, and he, I love how he's able to uh, make complicated subjects very simple. And then this way, if you know nothing about electronics, you can still get an idea of what class D means, what class A means, uh, what what DAGs do, how they do what they do, and so on. Um, and I really, really like that about him. Um, I love their website, in particular the forums. I like the fact that Paul is not afraid for posters to say what they really believe. So if you own a PS Audio and you've got a problem, you post it and either Paul or somebody in the technical department will get back to you. I like the fact that he doesn't censor you, I presume, unless you, you are using, you know, terrible words and so on. But, you know, whenever I visit it, I, I read comments and the comments are not censored, which I really like. I think that that kind of transparency is really good. And, and to this day, he's one of the few manufacturers that maintains an active forum for participants to get involved and, and post and so on. And you can post about any brand, not just about PS Audio, um, which is very unique. If you go, for example, to other manufacturers uh, where they have forums, it's almost always um, entirely about that product or that brand, not, not PS Audio. You can talk about competitive uh, DACs or amplifiers and so on. So I really like that. Now let's talk about the products. I love the BHK. So they're, they're top end models, the preamps, the monoblocks, uh, the stereo amps, they're fantastic. They're hybrid designs. They have such a great combination of liquidity and detail and speed and bass and sound stage. My God. Um, one of the hallmarks of PS Audio is definitely their soundstage. Very airy, very big, um, tremendous space between instruments, depth. Um, uh, and I suspect the reason is because I know Paul um, finds that very important uh, as, as an objective. And certainly uh, before Arnie Nudel passed away, that was also one of the things that he valued very, very much. And of course, uh, Baskin King, uh, the designer. So BHK stuff, superb performance and relatively reasonable when you think of the competition that that uh, sells that it sells against power regenerators they do work as advertised 
Uh, one thing about power uh, conditioners is that not everybody needs it nor can necessarily benefit from it. Um, whereas the what I find about the regenerators is that they consistently work very, very well and for most people. Um, they uh, output a consistent voltage, so you know that the power going to your electronics is, is not going to vary crazily. You know that the harmonic distortion out of the line is going to be quite low. Um, uh, we have clients in the cottage area where the voltage swings is terrible. It goes from quite low to quite high. You, you get these surges and the PS Audio can do a great job of protecting the equipment that you plug into it. And I find that it sounds very good. It, it, it does not choke a big power amplifier that's plugged into it. Is it perfect? No. In some other circumstances, um, an isolation transformer type of device like Taurus Power can work better, uh, especially if you've got no very high noise through your, your system. It can, for some reason, work better doing that. Um, but all in all, their power regenerators are very, very good. The DirectStream DAC, superb product. Whether it was the version one or the most uh, recent version, superb product. Dollar for dollar, I don't know of anything better in its price range. Uh, I love the fact that it sounds so good. I love the fact that you can tweak to your heart's content if you are a tweaker. Uh, I like the fact that the factory continues to support you with firmware updates. That is wonderful. It means that when you buy the DirectStream DAC, and then there's a firmware that becomes available, you can download it, and now you've got a new DAC. So uh, you don't have to spend any money, the factory supports that, it's it's wonderful. I find the Stella Strata in the Stella series to be a superb value. It's a combination of DAC, preamp, power amp, streamer, all in one. All you have to do is hook up a pair of speakers and you're done, I mean, it's really that simple. I find it to be a really good value for money. I like the fact that Periodically, the factory has um, a trade-in program. So if you want something that they're promoting, you can trade in your product and they make it very easy to do so. You just send it in and so on. We don't get that uh, program in Canada, but those of you watching from the States, you, you can access that program quite well. And then finally, I love the fact that Paul invested in a company, Octave Records, where they're releasing good music really well recorded. And so if you are starving for good interesting music that is really well recorded octave uh, records is a good uh, label to 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 look into okay uh bad so this first point is not really bad um just remember i'm, I'm sort of nitpicking here i mentioned earlier that i really like the stella strata value and performance by comparison, the regular uh, the, the rest of the Stella series is just merely competitive. In other words, I don't find it punching above its price range. It's certainly competitive. You can compare it to a Hegel, and some people will like the PS Audio, some people will like the Hegel. You can compare it to Peachtree, you can compare it to Name. I'm just naming products that we carry. And then, of course, there are others, uh, Parasound and Cambridge and so on. Um, for the money, certainly the Stella Strata, uh, the Stella amplifiers offer tremendous power uh, by, by, by way of using Class D amplification. And for some of you, that will be the answer. You, you want to play music at very high volumes or you have speakers that need to be woken up uh, to sound great. The, the power amplifiers are really good that way, it produces a lot of power. The other bad, I know that some buyers have reported that there are times where you have upgrade bugs that uh, you will download a firmware and it doesn't work all that well or it doesn't work or it doesn't download and so on. Um, again, just being nitpicky, keep in mind the fact that you have these updates is a good thing. And they will sort it out. The, one, the factory does sort it out. It's just that sometimes there are these issues. Um, fit and finish is not always consistent. We've had BHK pieces where uh, the, the lines between the, the joints, if you will, don't look all that well put together or don't line up that well. I mean, it's part of the charm in the sense that they've designed their their products so you've got horizontal lines, vertical lines, and so on. So it makes it interesting. It's not just one front panel. Um, but sometimes you will see, um, um, I don't know, just weirdnesses. Uh, maybe it's just stuff that gets into the lines or whatever. Um, uh, once I, I, I got a piece where it wobbled and it turned out that the bottom, the foot was was not 
flush, you know, so you got these kinds of things. Uh, I hate the top plexiglass uh, plastic uh, black piano finish. As a, as a visual component, it looks nice. The problem is it's very soft and it scratches very easily. So uh, I, I don't like that. Uh, I don't like the push buttons. They feel cheap. You know, again, I'm, I'm nitpicking here, but it does feel cheap. Um, the, the, the construction, I think, could feel better. But again, I have to keep in mind that they're trying also to not sell it for a crazy amount of money like some of the competition does. Okay, another bad. Um, repairs of old or discontinued power regenerators can be quite expensive. Uh, I haven't had that personal experience personally, but I, I've seen some um, comments on the forums where a, an older power regenerator that might have cost $1,200 when it was new, now to repair it might be six or $700, and so that's quite expensive. Um, so that could be a negative. Um, resale value. Resale value is average or below average. This is not good. Uh, it, uh, in a lot of cases, it's significantly below average. I don't know why, to be honest, because the products are good. They're well made, they, they sound good, they, they offer good value. Uh, but for some reason in the resale market, it's not that great. Well, I'll give you one specific example right now. Um, a client just emailed me this morning saying, I would like to consider trading in Generation 1 DirectStream DAC. Um, uh, what is it worth? So I did a quick search and on uh, Canuck Audio Mart, you've got in the States an equivalent called the US Audio Mart. Um, there's a dealer who uh, was able to procure uh, a, a, a selection or, or some quantity of the DirectStream DAC Mark I refurbished at the factory with a one year warranty for approximately a third the price, selling it for a third the price of what the new ones used to sell for. Which means that if he can sell a refurbished, factory refurbished unit for a third of the price, then your non-refurbished, used lovingly, I'm sure, by you, uh, will sell for substantially less. This drags down your, unfortunately, your resale value. Another example is it doesn't help that from time to time, PS Audio in the U.S., uh, will offer sales on their product. So if if you bought a product for $8,000 and then the factory says we're having a sale for $5,000 for illustration purposes, well then what you paid $8,000 for now is nowhere near uh, the value and, and this is something that um, uh, I don't like. Um, you, you can certainly offer um, uh, uh, not discounts, but but special deals, if you will, but find a way to do it that, that maintains the buyer's uh, purchase value. Um, and then one last uh, bad would be there is no U.S. dealer network. Now, I know that Paul and his president would have thought very carefully about making this decision many years ago and deciding to go factory direct, and I'm sure that that was the right decision for them. What I'm looking at is more in terms of if you, a consumer, wanted to try one, it's not so easy. If, let's say you don't want to contact the factory and, and try it at home and go through all of that. Maybe you just want to go to a dealer. You, you can't do so so easily. Um, I'm not sure on balance that's necessarily a big, big issue because if you really wanted to try it, I think the factory has some sort of an in-house program that you can you can do so. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I, I think so. But this was one of the thoughts that came to my mind. Again, keep in mind what I said at the beginning. I'm being nitpicky in some of these cases. I'm struggling to find uh, uh, some of these points to talk about. So, ugly. I tried real hard. I couldn't think of anything ugly. Well, maybe you could say the resale value would be ugly because it's gotten ugly, at least for the DirectStream DAC one and the transports. Um, but overall, I couldn't really think of anything. I know in terms of service, where we've had certain uh, uh, circumstances where we needed service, 
um, the distributor took care of it very quickly and, and where it was necessary, he was able to ship it back to the factory. The factory took care of it, shipped it back to us. So um, other than that, I couldn't really think of anything really, really, really bad. So to wrap up, I like the PS Audio quite a bit. I think that they still, on balance, offer good value for money. The Stylus Strata, great value for money. The BHK, great value for money. Um, the Directstream DAC, superb value for money. I haven't tried the Air Lens yet. Uh, Lewis just bought one. I, I might uh, ask him to bring it in so I can check it out and see if I want to get one for the store. And the reason I haven't done so is yet, we have a lot of streamers. Like We have a lot of streamers. And so I haven't thought about it yet. And we've been also very busy. so. Um, on balance, I really like PS Audio. I like what the company stands for. I love their philosophy of offering consistent high value to the buyer. Um, uh, um, yeah, so love to hear your comments. Um, for those of you who asked me to do one about PS Audio, don't know if you had any negatives or whatever, I'd love to read about them. And for those of you who really love your PS Audios, yeah, go ahead, sling your arrows at me, uh, tell me how dumb I am about not liking other areas and so on. I, I'm here to learn as well. So, and, and we're a community, I'm sure you know just the way that I talk that I try to have fun and, and I don't take anything that seriously. So put your comments in the below, in the box below, and, um, and uh, uh, I'd love to uh, read more about them. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time, bye-bye.